good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome uh, to a specific special uh, webinar organized for our yes first and yes first business customers uh, i am mona kishor i am senior president yes first yes first business programs uh, these are premium banking wealth management propositions for discerning customers like yourself uh, as a part of these programs uh, we've been organizing uh, wealth webinars and knowledge forums for customers like yourself so that you can take calculated and uh, calls and unbiased calls uh, with respect to the evolving market trends today we have with us mr ramdeo agarwal chairman and co-founder of bilal oswal group as you know mr uh, agarwal is a veteran and an expert in this field as chairman of its asset management business motilal oswal asset management company mr agarwal has framed the qt lp which is quality growth longevity and favorable price investment framework and it's buy right sit tight investing philosophy he is the driving force behind the group's highly awarded research and has authored the annual motilal oswal wealth creation study since its inception in 1996 mr agarwal has been awarded the rashtriya samman patra by central board of direct taxes for a consistent track record of this integrity Mr Agarwal also been awarded a M of Chhattisgarh Dr Raman Singh Thank you for joining us today Mr Ramdeo Agarwal uh, we have organized this special uh, webinar in line with India's 75th Independence Day on the ev evolution of the India investment landscape Before we start the session I would like to request the audience if you have any questions please type in with the uh, in the chat box provided on your screens and towards the end of the session we'll be very happy to take your questions uh, so over to you mr agarwal for your opening remarks good evening friends and it's pleasure to be talking to all of you on this uh, special occasion of uh, uh, well seminar on 75th independence day uh, kind of a backdrop and uh, uh, of the 75 40 years i have spent in stock markets so i would i would say this evening let's try to uh, let's try to see the past under the heading compounded past and compounded future in the stock market i would term it like that so that uh, uh, there will be some theme uh, to this entire evening so the past was compounded uh, uh, when i started my career in 1979 80 -80, the index sensex was just about been launched it was 100 you know i mean it was just the start of the index today it is 60000 and this is x dividend so uh, this is about 15 and a half percent compounded from that day the index actually came into being in 1986 86 to so it was designed in 86 but they calculated from 7980 as a back calculation and then it went live in 1986 and by that time mutral in fact 1986 87 we laid the foundation for mutral also so I have seen uh, last 40 years of this markets uh, uh, almost every day, every day. I mean, I must have read all the newspapers every day and must have come to the market every day. So uh, what I have seen that 15% returns, I mean, actually, I'm also astounded when I see that actually it has delivered 15.5% compounded return. And what have we not seen? We have seen bankruptcy of 1991 when India didn't have any Forex. I mean, I mean, you look at it, what uh, Sri Lanka is going through, little short of that, India went through. We didn't give up. We placed our gold, whatever, and we got the a billion dollar, two billion dollars from uh, some bank. Uh, and then IMF came to help. But almost were basket case, like uh, what uh, Sri Lanka is today, or little better than that, uh, in uh, in 1992. Uh, uh, from there, how we have journeyed till day, we have seen and even so, what I'm saying is that India has gone through all kinds of problems. In 2002, almost uh, we had uh, uh, before Kargil, there was really between India and Pakistan, we had head on uh, kind of a nuclear uh, conflict kind of situation. So, uh, India uh, India has gone through, say, uh, a 9 11 crisis globally, uh, then white to crisis, then uh, global financial crisis up to down it. So, we had all kinds of problems, uh, the global economy, local economy, and yet, we have compounded 15.5% in our index. So what I think is that next 40 years or next 10 years, let's try to 
get horizon of investing 5 10 15 20 depending on uh, how old you are if somebody is uh, if somebody is 25 uh, 27 i would say you have the full 40 years or 60 years ahead of you and it will be very very exciting india has that it is not a very fast moving some city economics it is a large you know like elephant and which has a sudden pace it is very difficult to speed it up but also very difficult to slow it down it has a natural pace so that's what uh, we are going to journey and uh, right now our per capita income is about $2,200 global average is about $12,000 we are a country with a lot of aspirations we are the youngest possible country the largest populated country so productivity of our people uh, with the help of modern technology they are going to go up and uh, and hence uh, gain, getting 5-6-7% kind of a compounded GDP growth rate with 4-5% inflation, so 10-12% to normal GDP growth rate is not out of imagination. Whether we will achieve or not, for how long we will achieve, that only time will tell. You have to remain optimist. I mean, I am a die-hard optimist about the future because nobody. the best thing about future is nobody knows about it. It unfolds every day. So, uh, keeping that in mind, I have remained optimist for the last 40 years and I have remained optimist till I die. So that is the kind of a faith you've got to bring about the future itself, future of India, future of uh, what is possible in businesses and, and no country prospers without the businesses underlying prospering. And hence, this is going to happen. And uh, uh, so in that backdrop, uh, the investing has undergone change in the sense that when I started in uh, 80s, the markets were extremely inefficient. If you could catch hold of a balance sheet and read it, I think you had competitive advantage in entering the market about that stock because nobody was bothered about the balance sheet. Balance sheet used to come after 18 months and uh, I mean some piece of paper it used to come. So uh, and there were no professionals in the stock market in 80s. And one of the advantage we had was we had a few uh, early charter accountants to come into the market, first four or five charter accountants to enter the market. There were no culture of equity research. So today you can have 60 analysts, top class, world class analysts covering a stock. That was not the situation at that point of time. So market were very inefficient. Uh, players were very small. Uh, you know, uh, there were 500, 700 brokers all over, but very tiny in terms of network, trade and everything. Uh, you, can, uh, you can imagine, uh, I think market cap of BSE at that time must have been about 20, 25,000 crores total, total, total market, which is today 280 lakh crores. 280 lakh crores. That was at that point of time, it was not even 1%. So, uh, it, uh, so markets were primitive, very small. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the daily trade was about 2000 crores per day. Today, it is 100 lakh crores, everyday trade. So, the kind of expansion which has happened in the last 20 years, and thanks to digital, thanks to internet, thanks to uh, computing power, and the reforms which SEBI has brought. So, uh, so investing has changed. Uh, it has become more sophisticated, but the basic tenets of making money then and now is same. That is the gap when you buy bargains and bargains uh, is always relative. In that market, what was bargain? Today, you will not get those kind of bargains today because markets are far more evolved and much more expensive. But when you get bargains and so buying bargains in the market is the way to go. And uh, whether it was 200 years or 20 years or 40 years and now and next 40 years. The game in the market is to buy bargains. Market is one place where you can buy 100, 100 rupees thing for 10 rupees and you can sell 10 rupees thing for 100 rupees. You should have an eye to figure out what is the underlying value. Price is known to everybody. Nobody knows the value. So do you know, I mean, in some spots, you know the value. And in those spots only, you are going to mint money. And those opportunities are growing day by day. And hence, uh, I would think that uh, uh, investment mindset is changing because the availability of information is exploding. With that, a lot of noise is also coming. And that is changing the behavior of the people. And uh, that's how the things are looking more complicated, but basic tenets remain still the same. <clears throat> uh, I, I have very limited exposure to other markets. I mean, I have, uh, I have been an India practitioner and I have not invested anything outside. But we get to hear a lot. I mean, I've been going to listen to Buffett. So I've got a lot of friends in US and uh, we learn a lot from them. So clearly I have observed the US market. 
their practices have come to all over the world as a market economy and uh, we've heard about the stock but i personally not invested anywhere but i think there are two distinctly two two spectrums of the market i would say one end the most developed market most rich and deep, deepest market is us and other end is india which is emerging market but deepest emerging market i would say one of the deepest and most prominent emerging market so if there is any difference between emerging and developed i think uh, i mean a lot of global macro allocators they have they clearly make a difference between uh, developed market and developing markets uh, but whenever it comes to developing markets or emerging markets i think india will have a, a prime place now uh, after what we see in china what's really happening so china is the largest emerging market but i think india has the uh, i would say is a very unique uh, uh, marketplace where a lot of practices are as advanced as us or many other places but uh, i mean per capita income is low business have lot more growth potential going forward and uh, and internet is a huge leveler in terms of what can happen in the economy what can happen to distribution uh, uh, what can happen to the best practices and what can happen to the dissemination of information so i think we are we are living very interesting times uh, and uh, and uh, 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 the growth possibilities for india is never been uh, higher than now because uh, uh, because of this uh, internet and uh, sustained uh, build up of the infrastructure and uh, uh, i mean we 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 always keep comparing current condition with what is there in japan what is there in europe what is there in america of course they, we are not comparable probably we could have done better but uh, Uh, but if you think of what we have done at our own end in 85 95% of, of the population was below poverty line today that has been reduced to 20 25% but it's still 25% people are below poverty line so that has been the achievement in last uh, uh, 30 35 years and uh, as we go forward next 10 years we believe that uh, literally everybody will be in next 10 15 years everybody should be out of the poverty line and hence it will create a huge middle class a uh, consuming middle class uh, out of this country and that is our opportunity for everybody to uh, that, that that particular groups consumption is going to drive the economy so uh, but uh, my macro understanding of economy is very limited i'm a chart account by profession so i understand businesses i understand how the businesses work and uh, and i think entrepreneurs are the biggest magicians they make money out of nothing forget about giving them money they make money out true entrepreneurship is making money out of nothing you go and see all the empires the starting is without any capital or very meager capital and they might be today 100 billion dollars 200 billion dollars whatever but they have not started with lot of money because right in the beginning they learn how to make money and then that machine keeps becoming bigger and bigger and bigger uh, over a period of time the power of compounding and the solid business model the combination of those two they create empire over a period of time so uh, i think it's a one of the most um, uh, opportune time for india to grow and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, for the investors to invest because during this period uh, there's a lot of innovation financial innovation in the marketplace where when we started there was no concept of mutual fund i mean as late as 1985 india didn't have mutual funds i think mutual funds came sometime in 90s and uh, in meaningful way it came actually in this century I mean, I think 2003 onwards, actually, uh, it, it it started picking up uh, steam, and by 2008, it became of sudden size. And now it has got momentum, and hundreds and thousands of schemes uh, have come up. Uh, 50, 60 uh, management houses have come, but this is just about the beginning. I mean, I know for sure uh, for 260, 250, 60 lakh crore GDP, having an AUM of 25, 30 lakh crores is nothing. Sky is the limit. Number of participants, demand accounts have grown in last uh, three years from 40 million to 100 million. I'm sure in next two, three, four years, five years, it will double, and then again in next four, five years, it will triple. So uh, go uh, another, uh, you know, kind of 100 million. So the in next one decade, markets could be expanding from 100 billion demand accounts to maybe 300, 350 million. So this is a very, uh, you know, uh, exciting times in the stock markets. and uh, for the distributors like yes bank and all uh, they they must uh, they must do their uh, they must put up the best 
to uh, harness this potential and uh, uh, and of course uh, nothing goes without uh, mistakes you know i mean uh, whether it is retail investors or hi investors all over the world not only in india all over the mistakes are same they want to buy they should be buying at, uh, at the bottom of the market and selling at the top they end up doing the just the reverse so and it is very difficult to do uh, selling at high and buying at low then of course you will not be listening to me uh, if you have mastered that so so clearly it is not possible to time the market the best is give it up and just keep allocating the best time to buy is when you have the money and best time to sell is when you need the money so clearly keep it very simple keep allocated is a compounded past uh, my uh, strong belief is that we have a compounded future there will be challenges on a short term basis but uh, will uh, will overcome all the hurdles and we are headed towards uh, i mean say 50% compounded forex from here i mean we wrote this paper to like uh, index when it was 50000 it's already 60 i would not like to say to like 40000 but from uh, 2 lakhs i think in next 9 9 10 years we should see 2 lakhs sensex and uh, so that is nothing big it is a forex from the current levels uh, 15% compounded uh, for 10 years it gets it, it goes to forex and that's what i'm saying that it should we should logically see anywhere around 2 lakhs i mean it could be 180 it could be 220 uh, uh, the range could be from 130 to maybe 3 lakhs so uh, let's see where we end up in the future i have no uh, certainty of the future but i know uh, i am optimist and uh, if you buy reasonably well uh, you don't have to be rocket scientist but you have to be in the market you need to bring a lot of patience and uh, patience is the patience will be tested at the when the markets are down not when market is are doing well markets are doing well everybody wants to be in the market but nobody wants to be in the market when chips are down so your patience will be really tested and the guys who who don't change the color when the markets are down are the guys who are going to mint money and who are those guys the guys who don't look at their statements or they don't bother too much about the market and they take only help of yes bank they are the guys who are going to do very well but the guys who are every minute they are watching the market i don't think they have the right attitude towards making money so with this i'll close my remarks we'll we'll talk more on the q and a thank you uh, you know that's that's a very positive and a optimistic view of the market and i li- really like the way you simply put it saying uh, you know buy when you have the money and sell when you need the money i think that's a great mantra to follow uh, uh sir a specific question given the you know market movements in the last few weeks so markets rallied in the last few weeks and then in the last couple of days some we've seen some correct so uh, the general question is therefore that do you think that you know in the, you said that investors should keep buying and the future is optimistic but do you think that the dips in these corrections are the right time to buy or should investors also look at booking some profits uh, at these levels I can't time the market and i can't advise on that i mean uh, maybe you are a financial advisor out there i mean it depends on your uh, attitude if you are if you are a short term trader then obviously price is very important as you become shorter in duration for your investment price becomes more important as you become longer price doesn't matter then it is a compounding story whether you went 100x or you went 1000x it doesn't matter you paid 20 bucks here and there so the whole issue is about the horizon if you are short term trader of course price is important but that, there i can't do anything you have to really uh, be your own master or maybe some somebody else is your master so you have to ask them what should you be doing on a daily basis i don't think we can anybody can give you advice sensible advice on that so because see this is the nature of the market market i know one thing fi's they sold 3 lakh crores worth and it depressed the market by 20 30% but just by buying 3 4 billion dollars uh worth of stuff out of 30 they brought just 3 or 5 5 billion dollars back and you see what has happened for selling 30 billion dollars they could depress the market by 3000 points but by buying 5 billion dollars the market has gone up by uh, 2000 points so that's the cost of entering the market so uh, would you like to be with them you know or would you like to have your own mind because you got to remain invested and don't bother too much about these fluctuations and you should be ready when you buy you are going to see 5 10% correction that is the worst it can happen and after that you are liberated and then you are sitting on the compounding machine that's how i think 
Uh, sir, there's a question from uh, one of our clients, Mr. Girish Gupta. The question is that how do you see international challenges uh, affecting the market? I think uh, there is a reference probably to the expected global recession. Uh, do you think that India is insulated and uh, are we well pra- uh, placed? And which are the sectors which will be most impacted if at all there is a global uh, recession? A big global macro question, they're important to know. They have good answers for that. But I don't have a good answer. I'm not a global, as I said, I'm not an economist. And forget about the global macroeconomics. There are too big a position. And the best thing is to hear whosoever is a good, good at it. But you cannot do investing based on looking at the global macro also. Even if their macro call is right, you might be wrong in your investment call. So don't bother too much about the macro, global macro, local macro. They are very important. Uh, but uh, uh, if somebody had told me that uh, there is going to be a war, there is going to be a COVID, there is going, to, I would have been just out of the market. But you see what has happened to the markets. Markets are all time high. They're just about five six percent below all time high, with all the things happening. So it is very difficult. I mean, very difficult to correlate market movement with the uh, macro factors. And getting them also is wrong. Uh, is very difficult. But on top of it, getting the investor psychology right is also very difficult. So it's a multivariate model. Uh, we should we should keep the investing process simple, and uh, and uh, you know we must live the life of a simple investor rather than trying to be very complicated ones. As far as sectors are concerned, I think uh, uh, the 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 businesses the uh, the large profit pools. The way I look at it is the large pro- from where the large profit pools are coming. So we make about. Eight nine lakh crores of profit. So from where it comes every year, and which is going at, it is expected to grow at 10 15 percent. So from where it comes, so that is the biggest profit pool is from the banking sector. Second biggest is IT sector. So about 27 28 percent comes from banking sector. So that is likely to boom. IT sector is doing well, and I think it is the it is the sector of India. It is the only sector which is in the last 20 22 years. Every year it has grown, and the quality of profit is very good. I don't see any reason why Indian IT sector will not do well. Maybe not as well as what people are expecting, but will keep doing well. Indian private sector banking will do very well. These two itself is about 54% of the total profit. Then comes, so like that, you have to go one by one, all the sectors and see uh, what is going to happen. Uh, uh, it is Here it is, it may not be the right forum to talk about the entire spectrum, what we think. And uh, so you have to take your own call, maybe read research reports and figure it out. What are your views on uh, investing in new age companies? So there was a big, uh, you know, euphoria around investing in IPOs and new age companies last year. Uh, there was a tepid response, corrections, and therefore, uh, one, do you think that India Inc. would therefore now be a little more cautious when coming up with IPOs in this year at least? And uh, what is your general view on investing in these uh, new age companies? Because a lot of them don't really have a revenue model, uh, you know, as of now. There is, see, some of these new age companies have become very large because internet is the one of the biggest magic which has happened in the last uh, 10, 15, 20 years. So uh, now the businesses riding on internet are going to become big. And uh, uh, we have seen globally they have become big. And uh, they are likely to scale up even further as we go forward. Now, the issue is that uh, there's a lot of hype. Last year, uh, just 12 months back, there was too much of hype about this business all over the world. And there was a global synchronization, the way they were thinking, the way people were pouring money. Almost every day, there was one unicorn bond, and people were giving some crazy valuations to the things. And I mean, based on 2030 revenue, 2035 profits, or something like that. So that hype cycle is busted. Clearly, it is busted. And the stocks are corrected by anywhere between 50 to 60, 70 percent, if not 80, 90 percent in some unlisted space. So clearly, lessons have been learned. And uh, but there will always be survivors. And uh, some of them will become very large as we go forward. It's not a free ride for everybody. And uh, so the guys who don't get a scale, who don't have burnt money. And uh, now even the companies which are listed, now they are correcting the course. Now, instead of growth, now they are focusing on profitability. Earlier, they said profitability is not our motive in short term. We want only growth, scorching growth of 70, 80, 100 percent. Now they are saying that market has punished us. They want profit also, apart from growth. 
So now they are trying to give growth with profits. So that, that's what change you will see. All the digital companies now their language will change, and they'll become they'll come to senses. They'll come to the ground, and instead of talking about 2030, now they're talking about 2023, 2024, and uh, uh, and you know one of the major challenge is the accounting of these companies. These companies accounts are not. Uh, of course, the uh, Schedule Six is applicable to both of them. So what happens is that all the digital companies, their cost of acquisition of the customers, they all get debited to the PNL. Whereas in case of the old economy, it gets supplies by way of store expenses and things like that. So that is the fundamental difference, and and we don't know how much to be capitalized, how much not to be capitalized. So uh, the companies are very large and uh, very uh, uh, very well managed. These companies. Just that accounting is little messed up in the sense that, and then the moment market is confused, then in confusion you don't know what is the underlying value because there is no profit. Market is used to discount the profits, but there is no profit because there is too much of capital expenditure being debited to P and L. So I think uh, everything is not bad in digital companies, and uh, dust will settle. Even the hype is uh, busted. So I'm sure uh, this is one segment which is going to do well, and uh, you must look for companies. Uh, which has digital model or digital model, and uh, is available to you at this point of time at reasonable price. Sir, uh, there's again a question from another client in our Q and A chat box on uh, on investing right now. Should one invest in lump sum, or is it still better to do a systematic transfer uh, plan? Safer mode is of course a systematic withdrawal plan, so systematic uh, investment plan. So uh, any kind of I mean, right now there's a lot of volatility. We don't know what's going to happen to the FI flows. We don't know this Ukraine war, then this global recession, U.S. inflation. Uh, so there are a lot of happening, a lot of things happening, uh, and uh, so I mean you can you can put in three installments, four installments in four months. You do twenty five, twenty five. A crore you want to put twenty five uh, every bi month, sing monthly, weekly. Could be a plan, balance it, and get an average of five six months. So that will give you. At least entry point, which will become a little more smoother. Instead of you buy now and market goes down by ten, fifteen percent, you'll feel bad. But if you buy it six average uh, a point of time, maybe it will be smoothened. But then you don't buy now and market shoots up by ten percent. Don't feel bad. Then you get best. I mean, you get average of both the worlds. Uh, sir, you mentioned at the beginning, you know, on how the markets, uh, how the economy has changed, and how. uh internet has boomed and you mentioned that it's been a great leveler so uh, now with the information availability on internet a digitization where people can click uh, invest at you know the click of a button uh, have you seen any changes in the demographic participation in the market uh, and do you think that is something that will impact the india growth story therefore like do we see more retail investors do we see more informed investors what's the trend that's in your Uh, you see, I think onboarding was very tough uh, in earlier times. Now, post COVID, uh, digital onboarding has been allowed, and even digital infrastructure has been strengthened with Aadhaar card and a lot of things. So uh, clearly, uh, the the spread of the market uh, uh, is uh, happening very rapidly. We are getting about two, two and a half, three million customers every day, every month, uh, which was not the case earlier. It used to be two, three million customers per year. So that has, I mean, ten to twelve x kind of a pace of growth change has happened, and uh, I would think that from in last two years it has gone from forty to hundred million. In next five, four to five years, I see uh, this expanding to two hundred million, and uh, maybe another five years we could be touching three hundred, three hundred fifty million. So that is going to change the entire demographics of uh, investing public, and since the since it is so large, almost every worthwhile house. Will be in the market. Politically, also it becomes very, very important uh, for the Delhi to address this particular segment. So I think uh, a lot will change. The intelligence level will go up because uh, as more participants come, more uh, intelligence comes in the system. So uh, it markets will become more efficient. You will get much more fairer price for what you are holding. So a lot of these things will change. What I have seen between. 85 to 2022 will happen even more rapidly between 22 to 32. Right, sir. Uh, uh, another question is on now asset class diversification. So there are two questions uh, in the chat box. One is on investing in gold. 
uh, various sets of investing in gold now there is uh, sovereign gold bonds there are etfs uh, of course physical gold is always there uh, and one question is whether one should invest in gold to hedge their risks uh, and second is which mode is a good mode for the, the retail investor and then i'll come to the next question which is about investing in debt instruments uh, in terms of asset uh, asset class diversification uh, that do you think debt is attractive right now and if somebody had to uh, have debt in their portfolio what would you really suggest uh, this is a classic wealth uh, wealth managers dilemma or th that's what they specialize in you know asset allocation i am not i'm a great asset allocator i am 100% in equity so Uh, my profile might not my wisdom on this may not be of much use to the people who should have more balanced portfolio between debt and equity and maybe real estate and gold what are they have so as far as the gold is concerned i think it is non producing asset but uh, i think in last 18 years it has done reasonably well but uh, i don't think uh, it is going to take you uh, anywhere uh much much longer i am mean, like 5 6% what are the inflation that's what you should be getting because that itself doesn't produce anything but uh, so i i am not a great uh, believer in gold uh so as far as debt instruments are concerned you get about 5 6% and in equity you get almost 2x of that about 12 13% so i would always go for uh as much equity i can buy the issue is that if i want fixed income for whatever reason maybe age is not on my side or there are some expense some kind of a continuous uh, call on uh, you for the payment for house mortgage or something then i need a continuous flow and for that i can i can think of allocating something in fixed income so but you have to be very careful how much you put in fixed income because fixed income doesn't grow your purchasing power your inflation and fixed income rates are more or less matching so your purchasing power of the your underlying savings don't go up only when you take little risk and move out and go to the equity asset class uh, uh equity asset class there are only equities even the real estate is almost equity type where uh, it will be more inflation protected and uh, you get uh, you'll gain market uh, purchasing power of your uh, savings to be rising so uh, i would say that uh, buy as much as equity like assets and less and less where you have guaranteed return which will be half of that so you have to arrive at right mix uh, depending on your profile and uh, how much are risk taking ability also and uh, so your specific uh, take on small and mid cap uh, space mm -hmm. uh, do you think over the next and if we don't like really look at the next 15 20 years and we just look at the next 3 to 5 years do you think they are an attractive bet uh, or should an invest typically try and have more of large caps in their portfolio given that small and mid cap uh, stocks had also risen a lot so the risen a lot is a very important thing because you see number of small and mid caps are a lot but the quality of small and mid caps are fewer and those fewer ones are very expensive much more expensive than their counterpart in the large cap so you got to have a good mix between large cap and small cap i mean basically wherever you understand don't bother too much about the cap because now you don't have fundamental advantage of buying a small cap ki bhai idhar 20 ka pe mil raha hai wahan mere ko 10 ya 12 ka pe mil raha hai aisa hai nahi if you look at the i mean there is no quality gap in fact if the quality is good then if uh, if a large company is available at 25 27 pe others have would be 40 45 pe so you don't have fundamental advantage i'm not talking about all of them but most of the places that is the situation right now so you should not be too much uh, cap dependent you should be more idea dependent where is it you are seeing the idea to be big and that's where you should be putting bet irrespective of the size right uh, so uh, to our audience uh, we'll be just taking the last uh, couple of questions so please type in your questions uh, if you have any uh, one of our audiences sir has asked a question without which we have seen no discussion being complete uh, what is your view on crypto uh, uh, one round a lot of uh, cryptos have gone down by i think 90 95% 98% i think whatever little is left i think that will get cleaned in next a few years because i really don't see uh, i mean uh, I, i really don't understand about it so but i don't speak much on this but uh, i have not understood that uh, why should what is the underlying intrinsic value of a crypto i am not convinced that uh, this 20000 dollars or 18000 dollars 
has any any correlation with the underlying uh, uh, intrinsic value. So if there is, if I don't understand the intrinsic value, where is the question of paying this kind of fancy prices? So to me, it still remains a mystery, and uh, a, a thing or not understood uh, concept. Yeah. Uh, there's a question again from an audience on your view on structured products, uh, you know, uh, AIFs, uh, PMS. Uh, what's your view in terms of, uh, you know, HNIs and retail investors? Should they go for these products or are SIPs in mutual funds maybe the best bet? No, no. So the issue is that mutual fund, AIF, PMS, these are all, they're all uh, investment vehicles with different promises. Somewhere it is close ended, somewhere it is uh, only for HNIs, somewhere there is a thematic, somewhere it is. See, mutual fund is a very broad public, you know, you can come with 100 rupees, 200 rupees, 500 rupees. So it's a very mass retail product. Uh, if you are HNI, you have a very specific requirement, you want a customized portfolio, or other person is offering a customized portfolio with some theme. So, you know, these are the all equity vehicles. Uh, so I don't think at fundamental level, there is any difference in the risk risk assumed by the investor. I mean, so these are all equity vehicles. Now, depending on the situation per se, you know, how, what one is looking for, whether the, the offering, the product is matching with your requirement. I think you should be taking this way. But fundamentally, they're all equity vehicles. Don't forget that. Sir, from your experience, uh, and you did touch upon it briefly, but what are the, uh, maybe the two or three biggest mistakes uh, that an investor should avoid when playing in the market? I mean, one is that, of course, don't buy any untrusted management. The crooked guys, they will go to the hell and they will take the investors also to the hell. Guaranteed, okay. Uh, but in short term, a lot of these guys, they are very charming, uh, very smart in talking. Uh, so you, you you have to avoid because that's the fundamental difference because equities are not one type. There are bad equities, there are good equities. Only good equities compound, not the bad equities. So you have to fund at first level, you have to avoid bad equities. And then uh, I think your story will start. So clearly that is one, avoiding the bad managements. Second is that uh, uh, not timing the market, but having good sense of bargains. I think the real game is that there's a place where you get it's not about stocks, it's about stock bargains. And if somebody can, I mean, nobody can be ultimate experts, but on zero to 10, you should be pushing your <coughs> yourself to learn to become bargain hunters. And uh, you'll become better over a period of time. There's no set formula or timeline, but you'll become better if you want to become a bargain uh, picker. And bargain picker and bargain horror. And then after picking it, harvesting it. That's a game in the stock market. It will become bigger, more exciting as we go forward, become more global and much larger fit than what is there right now. In your mind, is there any next bubble in the Indian market which is waiting to burst? Bubble to hoga hi hoga. Abhi nahi hai. Abhi nahi. Bubble, bubble to abhi burst hua na. So now we are at somewhere in between and I don't see like the, all the digital thing it got busted uh, last year and so uh, now something has to be first bubbled up first and then we'll uh, i mean it will it will come in some form or other right now i don't think i don't see anywhere but uh, uh, but yes there will be a bubble somewhere it will it will show up as we go along lastly uh, you know uh, offshore investing trend now for retail and hni investors uh, do you think it's a green signal or a word of uh, caution? Again, you know, having faith in the, see, like the kind of faith, optimism, as I said, compounded past, compounded future. I mean, simply those four words in India ka kaani bol de. So, aisa, can you say about any economy and any country, except for US, I don't think you can say for anything else. So, I would say overseas means you have to go with a lot of caution, a lot of caution. And I would venture out to do something in US. Nasdaq or something, you know. So I would be very limited in my approach to start with. And let, if you have a because of your background or whatever, you have a fantastic understanding of US or any other economy for that matter. Opportunity is clearly global. You know, world is becoming very prosperous. So you can be international, but it all depends on your understanding of international opportunities, how confident you are, 
or otherwise your home base story is always easy and uh, so you might make 12 15% bahar jayenge to ho sakta hai maybe a percentage too higher but i don't think it will be i i think it will be one of the most exciting markets <coughs> the most exciting i don't know but i think it will be exciting market so you don't have to worry too much about <laughs> diversifying if you are not competitive Uh, Mr. Agarwal, thank you so much. That was indeed very insightful. Before we end the session, uh, we would like to hear some closing remarks from you. I think for everything, and, uh, as I said, uh, from where we started, compounded past, compounded future. I think you got to have faith in the past compounding. Try to see uh, the level of compounding which has happened uh, in the past, and uh, see the difficulties through which it has happened, and the future looks to be. future will be as challenging i can tell you this in terms of real economy and hence we'll have also whenever challenges are there it gives opportunity also so in a very prospering world uh, world is going from 100 trillion to 200 trillion in next 15 20 years so it's not it's not uh, becoming poorer world so in a rapid i mean in a steadily prospering world india is going to i mean the time for india is there that's what people say we have to believe in that but even if it is as good a time as last 40 years we are going to do very well so we have compounded past i have a very strong belief that we have compounded future and hence make best of it thank you thank you so much thank you for your time uh, thank you to our audience for joining in today we'll keep bringing to you many more such insightful webinars thank you sir